If you search for hearing aids on Amazon, you're likely going to come across the Autophonics Elite hearing amplifiers. They are not hearing aids, but on the company website, they indicate that they're capable of treating a mild to moderate hearing loss. So in this video, I'm going to put these devices to the test and see how well they perform. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and Founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Anthem, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to also click the bell to receive a notification so you never miss a new video. Autophonics is a company that distributes high-end hearing amplifiers. According to the FDA, hearing amplifiers are not intended to treat hearing loss and they can't be marketed as hearing aids. But like I mentioned before, these devices are capable of amplifying sound and they look a lot like hearing aids. So I went ahead and put them through the same testing that I would an actual hearing aid to see how well it performs. If you want to check these devices out for yourself, I went ahead and put a link in the description below. All right, so let's check out some of the features of the Autophonics Elite. And the first thing is, is the way that they look. So this is an Autophonics Elite hearing amplifier. They come with different lengths of tubes that you can use on those devices and then if you look really closely you can see two different types of domes on there but we have a solid dome and an open dome and depending on how much leakage of sound that you get using these devices you may actually need to use a solid dome to prevent that feedback the devices use size 312 batteries that you can put in the bottom of the devices right there you click it shut and it also has a rocker switch on the top there too. So if you click it up, it will increase volume. You click it down, it will decrease volume. If you press and hold that rocker switch, it will actually change between one of four different program presets. The Autophonics Elite only has one microphone that's omnidirectional, so it picks up sound from all directions. If we're talking physical fit of these devices, they're pretty discreet. They don't show very much. They're very small anyway, and then they just have that little thin tube that goes down inside of the ear canal. I'm not crazy about the color they have a beige color and they have a silver color. I think most individuals would end up getting the beige unless you actually have white or silver colored hair. Then going with the silver might make a lot of sense. Either way, they're pretty small. Color's not going to matter that much anyway. Now let's talk about performance. Performance of a hearing device is something that we can objectively test. Just like I would be able to test a hearing aid to see how well it's programmed, I'm able to test these types of devices using the same methods. The method that I'm gonna be using is called real ear measurement. This allows me to see if these devices are capable of meeting a mild to moderate hearing loss prescription. They also will let me test to see if the noise reduction feature is working and how well it works. Now, if you wanna learn more about real ear measurement, I highly recommend that you watch my video that I will link in the card up here and in the description below. Since the Autophonics Elite is supposed to be appropriate for a mild to moderate hearing loss as indicated on the Autophonics website, we're going to check its capability of meeting an NAL NL2 prescription for a mild to moderate hearing loss. All right, so let me explain what we're looking at here. When performing real ear measures, we are trying to match the amplification of the hearing device to a prescriptive target created from the hearing loss of a patient. The prescription for this mild to moderate hearing loss is indicated by the red hash mark line. In order to measure the amplification of this device, a calibrated signal is played from a loudspeaker in front of the patient. A probe tube inside the patient's ear measures the amplification from the device and is illustrated by the solid red line. The goal is to have this solid red line overlap with the red hash mark line. This would indicate that the amplification from the device is appropriate for this type of hearing loss. The red curve is with the Autophonics Elite in Program 1, also known as the normal setting. As you can see, the prescription is being met in the low frequencies, but is not being met in the high frequencies. In general, if you're looking for improved speech clarity, it is critical to hit your high frequency prescriptive targets. Now let's check out program two, also known as the noisy setting program designed to reduce background noise, which is illustrated by a solid turquoise line. The prescriptive hash mark line is now turquoise as well, but is still the same as the red hash mark line. In this setting, it is reducing some of the mid frequency amplification. Next is program three illustrated by the green line. 
This program is designed to reduce feedback, otherwise known as that whistling sound that you get from poorly fitted hearing aids. In this setting, the high frequency amplification is reduced to limit the risk of that sound leaking from the dome and cycling back through the microphone of the device causing that whistling sound. And finally, program number four, which is illustrated by the pink line. This program is also known as the power setting. This program is designed to increase the volume of the device and intended for things like watching the television in a controlled environment. When we overlap all of these curves from the four different programs at the default volume, we can see that they are all similar except for the third program illustrated by the green line, which reduces the high frequency amplification of the device. None of these programs meet a prescription for a mild to moderate hearing loss. Now let's take a look at a hearing aid that has been custom programmed to meet this mild to moderate hearing loss prescription as illustrated by a purple hash mark line. In this case, I used the Phonak Audeo B90 hearing aid. As you can see, I was able to almost perfectly match the prescription indicated by the solid purple line matching the prescriptive hash mark line all the way out to about 5,500 Hz. When comparing the real ear measurement curves of the Otophonics Elite with the Phonak Audeo B90, you can see the differences in the programming capabilities of these two devices. I did, however, want to see if the Otophonics Elite was capable of meeting the prescription by increasing the volume on the device itself. You can see by the new turquoise curve that we're able to get closer to the prescription in the high frequencies, but by increasing the volume overall, we are now over amplifying the low and mid frequencies, which can cause issues with speech intelligibility and comfort of sound. And when we compare this new volume setting with that of a custom program hearing aid, you can see that there is still a big difference. Now let's take a look at the noise reduction capabilities of the Otophonics Elite. When we play noise from that same loudspeaker, we want to see how much the solid red line drops from the solid purple line. The further it drops, the more noise reduction the devices have. When the test is over, it shows an average of about 6 decibels of noise reduction. Alright, as you just saw, the Otophonics Elite was not capable of meeting a prescription for a mild to moderate hearing loss. That being said, they did pretty good for a device that only cost 325 bucks. The Otophonics Elite hearing amplifiers are not going to perform as good as a customizable hearing aid. And they shouldn't perform as well. They're not hearing aids themselves, they're hearing amplifiers. What I think of when I think of hearing amplifiers is a device that is kind of like a stepping stone for someone who's having some hearing difficulty, but they're not really ready to commit to hearing treatment with actual hearing aids. And they're really not that expensive. So so you can actually get them, you can try them, you can see if you're getting any kind of benefit out of them. Chances are you could see some benefit, but if you want to get the maximum amount of benefit, you're probably going to have to take that step and actually get hearing devices that are able to be programmed exactly to your hearing loss prescription. Overall, the Otophonics Elite hearing amplifiers are clearly better than other hearing amplifiers on the market. That being said, I think that they're actually better than some of these online hearing aids that are not programmable that I have tested inside of my clinic. So if you're someone who's looking to get just a little bit of a boost, going with the Otophonics Elite hearing amplifiers might be the best choice. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.